Marriage counselors, what's the stupidest reason a couple has made an appointment? Story 1. I had a woman come in for a couple's counseling. Over the phone, she reported that her boyfriend, with the same last name, very confusing, was distant and was refusing to listen. When the session started, it was just her that showed up. She went on and on about how absent he was and how he refused to see the progress she had been making in her life. It turns out the boyfriend was an ex who had a restraining order against her and lived halfway across the country from her. She was delusional and was receiving treatment for her mental health issues. She just could not get her thinking away from him and legally changed her last name to his because it would mean they would be together. She figured couples counseling was the way to work out their relationship issues. Edit. Not sure this is the stupidest, but it is definitely the most bizarre reason I've had someone make an appointment. Edit. Edit. I went to bed and this totally blew up, so I will try to answer a lot of questions in the edit. I realized things were not adding up when first he didn't show up, and then she told me he didn't live in the same place as her, and she had not spoken with him in over eight years. None of her story really makes sense. Her sister came to pick her up, and I was given the okay to talk to her. The woman's sister had thought she had come to me for individual therapy, and told me about the stalking and restraining order as well as her diagnosis. I saw her on an individual basis for about a month until I got her enrolled in ACT services, which is a team of case managers that will meet her daily if needed, as well as psychiatrists, RNs, and individual counseling. She still reaches out to everyone once in a while and is doing well. She's holding down a part-time job and living independently now. She still thinks that that man is her soulmate and that they are spiritually together. To all the people making Orange is the New Black references, I have never watched the show. I'm sorry. No, I did not breach confidentiality because my name is not given, her PHI was not given, and no specifics were given. Story 2 From the other side, I ran into an ex-girlfriend after being broken up for a long time. We decided to go to couples counseling as friends to clarify some stuff from the past. We went to the session, talked about some heavy stuff, but then ended up being very supportive to each other, and laughed, and stuck up for each other in a weird way. At the end, the counselor guy was just staring at us, sort of dumbfounded, and said something along the lines of, Uh, you two clearly need to get back together. I just remembered his face. He was looking at us like we were idiots. I think the idea of post-breakup couples counseling as friends might have been a new thing as well. Update, we got back together for about two weeks. I was away for work, and she went on a vacation with another guy. When I found out, she said she didn't know she wasn't supposed to. We were very much in love for quite a few years, but at the end of our relationship, she really started acting weird. She started acting out in crazy ways, cheating on me while I was at work, and blaming me. She started a weird cross-dresser alter ego. She would get mad at me for things that she imagined could happen. It got really weird at the end. This was five or so years ago. Last I heard, she had quit her job and sort of lives like a hobo. A friend of a friend mentioned her one time, and I found out she had gotten a DUI and had cheated on her current boyfriend. The counseling part was still very useful. I recommend counseling to anyone who has persistent relationship problems. I think the idea of a post-breakup counseling session is not a bad idea either, if it was a serious relationship. Saying things out loud to a stranger can make you realize how dumb a lot of stuff really is. I'll always cherish the good years with that girl. We had a very fun and interesting world together. I hope she's doing well. I learned a lot from that relationship, which set me onto the path of a much better life and a much more mature outlook on communication and relationships. Story 3 Stupid, selfish answer coming from a child who grew up with this. My mother scheduled an intervention. She and my sister and I met with a counselor and talked about all the things my dad did wrong. I would comment things that basically said, I don't think that's the problem, and would be constantly shut down. We had the intervention, and my dad got sober for a while. Turns out my mother is just an absolutely miserable child of a woman. When I lived with her, I saw glimpses of it. She broke a plate once, and when I asked why, she said, because I felt like it. Then when I started crying and picking up the pieces, she just drunkenly stumbled past me and went to bed. She was 36 when I was born. When we went to pick my dad up from rehab, there was a group thing where they went around the room. Everyone would say something about their partner that they were there to pick up, that they loved. My mother said she couldn't think of anything. My dad told me later in life that that was the moment he knew it was over. Turns out they only got married in the first place because my mother's parents didn't want them living together before marriage. Scotch-Irish Catholics. Go figure. 
After years of dealing with a childish, emotional, stunted, generally poopy partner, he stopped trying. Then she played the victim, same as her mother, and which she continued to do this to this day. She lies about being happy while being heavily medicated. I reach out to her to meet my girlfriend of, at the time, seven years, now eight, bless her, and she somehow manages to make our schedule around the wedding we are there for just making things difficult for her and cancels, telling me more or less, if you can't meet my exact criteria, screw you, I'm not even going to try. It's always something. I basically told her that's on her, and if you want to be a part of my life, you need to make an effort. I went no contact a few months back, and it's better for my mental health. Story 4. I'm not a marriage counselor, but I'm in school to be a mental health counselor at the moment. My professor has worked in the field for over 30 years, and we asked him this question at one point. He answered something like this. There is no stupid reason to seek out counseling. What may seem trivial to one person can completely consume another person. What may seem insignificant to you might just be the last straw for a client. It's our job to figure out why that stupid reason caused them to land in your care. Sometimes it's a lot of minor things that build up because they don't have any good coping mechanisms. Sometimes it's a major problem that they don't want to talk about, so they start small. Sometimes it's something they don't even realize is a problem, but is causing them distress regardless. There's a lot of reasons why clients might present you with something that seems completely insignificant, but the fact is they are in front of you paying you money so that you can help them improve their mental health. 99% of the time that means that they believe getting help is worth their time and money. He then proceeded to tell us a story about a woman who believed that Ashton Kutcher was her baby's daddy and she wanted a psychiatric professional to verify her mental health so she could file for child support and reconnect with him. As far as he could tell, she had never met Ashton Kutcher or even seen him in person. So, like, sometimes people are crazy, but not usually. Edit. The point he was trying to make is that there's always a deeper reason. It's never just, my husband lost a frying pan. It's the constant pattern of carelessness, or a lack of taking responsibility on the husband's part. It's never just, we couldn't decide on what type of chicken to get for our farm. It's the inability to come to an agreement on any decisions, minor or major. These little things are a symptom of the bigger problem. In the case of the woman at the end, the bigger problem was schizophrenia. Story 5. Not a couple's counselor, but I had a college friend post all their marriage and intimate problems, he wanted to try naughty positions, and how he was more experienced than she'd like, and felt that he'd cheapened their love by doing it before meeting her, on Facebook, and would routinely post when she and her husband would be going to couple's counseling, and ask that her friends show up beforehand so they could have a prayer circle to help the relationship in the lobby before the session. I didn't know the husband, but I felt bad for him, the way she was posting all their problems online for all to see. They met through a pen pal with a soldier who was in Afghanistan, something she signed up for at her church. She was a wait-till-marriage type and the definition stage 5 clinger. When he came back, they had a few dates and got married. On Facebook, there was a post about how he got married in six months and quickly had a kid. She would moan on Facebook about how she didn't understand why he said he didn't really know her. She totally misrepresented herself in the letters, according to a mutual friend. So did the husband, it seemed. The guy wasn't very religious either, and she'd talk about how, if she could only get him to go to church, he'd love God just as much as she did. She openly posted on Facebook that she wondered if another child would bring him closer to God and save the marriage. I ended up unfriending her because I couldn't stand the craziness and whining. I've since deleted Facebook, but I often wonder what happened to them. Story 6 a lot of couples schedule counseling for legitimate reasons like communication issues, but then it will come out that the real reason is something stupid and they don't even realize it. I had a couple married 25 years who were struggling to connect, and it turned out they were resentful of each other because they both wanted to spend various holidays with their families of origin, never talked about it, never mentioned it, just both simmered in silent resentment for 25 years. It was resolved so quickly once it was unearthed, Another couple came in for parenting challenges, told me very casually they hadn't done it since their youngest was conceived. How old is your youngest? Thirteen. Both were acting like it was completely normal and fine and unrelated. Turned out it was not normal and not fine and definitely related. Referred for intimate therapy and heard the whole family happily graduated from therapy within months. The entire family was seeking therapy with different counselors for different reasons, or so they thought. No, they were not doing family intercourse therapy. I can't believe I just typed family intercourse therapy. Story 7. 
I'll say this, as the male half of a 30-something couple, there are no bad reasons to go to counseling. Sometimes recognizing that you need help to get over a recurring argument is the most mature thing you can do. Example, my wife and I continually got into the same argument about me being a homebody and wanting to leave social gatherings early and her always wanting to stay until we are the last ones there. I felt like she never appreciated the fact that I was willing to put in four or five hours of social effort before wanting to leave, and she felt like I was always asking when we were going to leave. After having the same argument year in and year out, we took it to a counselor. We finally decided on a compromise that works for both of us. If it's her family or friends get together, she gets to decide when we leave. If it's mine, then I get to decide when we leave. It's hard to separate frustration, anger, resentment, and type feelings from a discussion sometimes, and counselors can help with that, while also providing communication tips. Just my two cents. Story 8. My ex made an appointment for us when he got his side girl pregnant. I was 26 and in grad school, lonely, stressed, and horribly gaslit, and went along. At the time, the therapist would say, if he hasn't changed by now, he's not going to. Usually I'm trying to keep people together, but I'm not sure I can now, and I would get mad. Now I look back and think, come on girl, run. Edit to add, we broke up about three or four months later. It hurt unbelievably for a bit at first, but after some time, distraction, and actual effort to move forward, coupled with a year of deciding to just be single, I am now doing phenomenally. It's so easy to want to keep something, even if it's disgusting and poisonous, because you don't see all the lying and cheating. You see the cute falling asleep together and hand-holding, but staying is worse than leaving sometimes. And I am just so happy to be out of that and as far away from that dumpster fire of his life as possible. Story 9 I had this couple in my office that was struggling with the fact that their dog would constantly pee in the bed. The husband was ready to boot the dog out, but the wife absolutely would not let this happen. They got the dog from a pretty reputable breeder, so the option of returning the dog was also there if they needed it. The husband doubted that, though. He said the breeder was some sort of creep that tries to hit on women when they go to buy dogs from him. The wife denied this, but the husband continued. The breeder tried to set up a date with the wife when she got the dog. He asked her if she wanted to go to this well-known Mexican restaurant in the town. The owner of the restaurant was kind of a prick, though. He would always skimp out on the chips and salsa and would charge you if you asked for another basket. He also berated the bussers and waitresses in front of the customers. Screw that guy. Story 10 I work with a lot of kids, and I see far more stupid reasons that couples have not scheduled an appointment. Parents spill their guts while explaining what's wrong with their children, and 90% of the time, it's the parent's marriage causing issues with the child or family. This is totally not a catch-all statement, because many children have true behavioral and emotional challenges separate from their parent's marriage, but at the same time, if you feel like your child is struggling and you have tried everything, maybe try marriage counseling. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Story 11. Nothing is really stupid in making the decision to come in for a couple session, but the most startling session I've had was when the couple had barely sat down and one of them informed the other that the relationship was over, turned to me and said, thank you for supporting partner through this, and left the office. Edit. Thanks so much for all the positive responses and for all the stories you've shared about going through this. As some have mentioned, it's absolutely reasonable to ask a therapist to help with a difficult breakup, and in this case, the person who remained did become my client and successfully worked through some tough material. In the interests of confidentiality, I'm not going to share more details. I have to admit, though, even as a professional, I was totally shocked when it happened and had to work through my reaction live while focusing on supporting someone else. All part of being a therapist. Story 12. My anger management group facilitator told us a funny story about a couple that came in for counseling. The husband wanted to write a book. The wife said she would work and do everything around the house for a year while he worked on his book. So he quit work and wrote his book while she did everything. The book got published and was a hit. The publisher asked him to do a book signing tour. The wife was furious. She had supported him writing the book and she was done. They came to the appointment and explained the situation. The therapist asked the wife, so what would it take for you to be okay with the book tour? She said, a trip to Hawaii with my sister. The husband was like, really? Done. The appointment was over in five minutes. Since a few have asked, he couldn't tell us the title of the book due to confidentiality. Story 13. I was a life coach for a bit before I realized it was more administrative work than I wanted to do. 
I wanted to help people, not fight inner organizational political fights. During my brief time, one of my clients was really struggling with the color of the dog that her husband got for her. She wanted a specific breed of dog since she was a kid, and her husband did a bunch of research and got her one from a good line of the breed. But its coat was darker than the dog she imagined, and she was really struggling with it. We had a few sessions about expectations clouding your happiness, and it turns out the dog was the most explicit example of a much bigger issue she had in her life. But I had to seriously put my what the F on hold when she told me about the shade of her dog being a problem. Story 14. I remember having this one couple, mid-30s, who just couldn't see any possible chance for reconciliation. She was mad at him because his bowel movement smelled bad, and they only had one bathroom. The kicker is that he always would spray air freshener, yet she said it wasn't enough. She felt like if she needed to use the restroom, she shouldn't ever have to smell him, albeit mixed with air freshener smell, so she had finally had enough, and she wanted out. He begged and pleaded with her not to. He even tried changing his diet. Nothing. They came to me for help, and I'll never in my life forget that first meeting. He sat down with weathered, puffy eyes. He had been crying quite a bit looked me straight in the eyes and said, Doc, you should have used a serious tag. Story 15. My ex-wife suggested we go to marriage counseling because she felt we needed to work on communication. I was slightly confused since she never really fought about anything with me, and I didn't know that much was amiss. So I went with her, and we had several sessions, and it basically turned into just parenting classes, since we didn't seem to have any issues to work on. Then one day she tells me she's bi, and is going to go sleep with a married couple she's been friends with for a week because that's the only thing that's going to make her happy. Would have been nice to know in marriage counseling that that was the real issue she was wanting to work on since I had no idea she was struggling with her sexuality. Guess there really was a communication issue. Story 6. Went to a counselor because my mother blew up over the bridal shower. There were five bridesmaids. Her sister, maid of honor, her cousin, my two sisters, and her sister-in-law. Maid of Honor lived in a different state, and no one was planning anything for the shower. Sister-in-law stepped up and did it all, and my mother lost her mind when they asked my sister to help split the cost, but had no say in the shower. Became the reason my now ex-wife hated my mom and family, pretty much. Went to counseling, and then became, if we had kids, your family will have nothing to do with them. My ex eventually got knocked up by some random person, and that was the final straw. So many red flags that I just didn't realize. Story 17. There was a case in marriage laws in India where the husband complained to his wife that the food didn't have enough salt. The wife asked him to get the salt himself. The husband said, if I have to do everything, why are you here? Go somewhere else and die. The next day, his wife ended her own life. The family of his wife came to complain, but he asked them to go somewhere else and end their lives too. They sued him for abetment of seppuku. But his lawyer pleaded that he asked the in-laws to pass away as well, but they didn't because the wife did, but it cannot be abatement. Court declared him not guilty and set a precedent that abuses and words said in passion are not abatement. Story 18. Not a counselor, but me and my ex had the biggest fight known later as the spoon incident. We were both working over 60 hours a week and we are stressed. Nonetheless, we had one night off together, so I made sure that I had cleaned the house and everything before she came home. She came back while I was unpacking the dishwasher and put the last cutlery in the drawers. When I finally put a spoon in the drawer, she said, That's not where it's supposed to go. I asked her whether this is the way you want to treat me after I've cleaned the house and stuff. Never been so angry at a girlfriend, while it was actually fairly meaningless. Story 19. My specialty is children and families, but during the pandemic I was assigned whatever came in because it has been super busy. One lady called and spoke with me first about how her husband was horrible at communication and never listened to her. She asked for a couple session. As soon as she ambushed her husband with a, there's a therapist on the line that wants to speak with you, her husband screamed, you call the therapist because I don't want to paint the house purple? She wanted me to convince him to paint the house purple, and like any normal human who sees colors, he refused to listen to her. Story 20. I'm a counselor with teenagers and kids. A school staff member dragged these two teens into my office one day, a boy and a girl. Both were clearly upset, but definitely didn't want to talk about it with me. You could have cut the tension with a knife as they sat frozen in their chairs staring at the floor. I saw them and thought, oh crap, she's pregnant. I'm trying not to panic at how to handle the situation as I finally get them talking, and it turns out they were just fighting because he sent a text to some girl. 
a text. At least she wasn't pregnant. Story 21. A buddy of mine was in therapy with his wife. She told me later that my friend, let's call him Gary, has a drinking problem. Me. Wait, what? Since when is Gary drinking? I never saw him drink alcohol. Her. That's the problem. Oh, Gary, I hope you're fine now. Story 22. So I understand the ancient idea of two virgins marrying, but sometimes, man, guess what? A couple comes to me, guy angry because his wife apparently wears a padded bra and uses makeup, and the wife is upset because he has a small dingling, but apparently acted as if he didn't. Big dong energy or whatever. The two were made for each other, truly. It seems like I worded it in a weird way. Her issue is that he doesn't drink. Story 23. Not a counselor, but sat in a bathroom for hours, waiting for a guy and his girlfriend to stop violently fighting about me being there, behind her back, apparently. Don't believe everything he says, folks. Sorry I was very tired when typing this, but me and the guy were trying to hook up. He told me he was single. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Story 24. Not a counselor. My aunt and uncle do weekly visits because my aunt doesn't like that my uncle touches himself. They have been going for three years. And my uncle is not going to budge. I don't know why he keeps paying money to a counselor who clearly isn't ever going to convince him to stop. Story 25. When my ex and I were having problems, she suggested marriage counseling. We went to a few sessions. I found out after the divorce she only went because she thought it would make her look better in the divorce. Indiana is a no-fault state, so all it did was cost me money. Story 26. Guy I knew from an inbred part of the country, everyone had the same last name, went to a counselor to deal with the issue that his brother was screwing his girlfriend. She was their cousin. The counselor said, nope, too weird for me, and sent him on his way. Story 27. Not a marriage counselor, but my girlfriend overheard a very loud argument from a neighbor's apartment concerning the way the man person of the relationship had put tomato sauce on a pizza, which the woman person apparently thought was completely wrong and ruined the whole thing. Story 28. Because naps. On weekends, I'd take a nap in the afternoon. Boyfriend was not okay with that and insisted I stop. I'll never forget the surreal feeling of his roommates watching me leave his house while he yelled at me. Story 29. Just popping in to remind everyone not to be shy to get marriage counseling, even if you think it might be too stupid based on this thread. Counselors get your money, and it's still their job to help you regardless. Story 30. A pimp and one of his workers scheduled a session to see me because they were having jealousy issues. They were legally married, and he was unhappy with how she couldn't leave work at work. Best couple. Story 31. Husband. She forgets the laundry in the washer. Wife. Okay, but I'm busy. Maybe you could put the laundry in the dryer if you see it? Husband. Yeah, that's not my job. That was the least of their problems. Story 32. Not a counselor, but my friend is one, and a couple came to her, unofficially, because the wife wouldn't tell her hubby when her mom was coming over because she knew he'd be sick or out that day. Story 33. My mom still talks about the Christmas where my dad didn't help her peel and prepare a bag of sprouts. They were divorced and he's unalive and it still comes up from time to time. Story 34. Reading some of these makes me wonder if counseling would have saved my marriage. Then again, I think actually wanting to save your marriage is a prerequisite for marriage counseling to be successful. Story 35. I'd make up a story like a lot of others, but it's 3 a.m. and I'm tired. If you're reading this, drink some water. I love you. Story 36. I need advice from a marriage counselor. My husband keeps threatening to have me arrested for perjury and calling the cops if I question him or say he's lying. Story 37. It's always the dishes. I don't see couples anymore because I cannot have one more conversation with adult human beings about the various philosophies of dishwashing. Story 38. My cousin went to counseling because her husband cut the sandwich straight instead of the diagonal. When I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. Story 39. There was a couple who fought because the husband stopped liking cheese for some reason. At it, no lactose intolerance, he just stopped liking cheese. Story 40. My sister-in-law made an appointment for marriage counseling because her husband greeted their dog before her when coming home from work. Story 41. He insists Jar Jar is a Sith Lord and she just doesn't care. Story 42. They got into a domestic situation because he wouldn't try her jam. I wonder if that is a euphemism. Story 43. Husband claimed on the internet that he wasn't the butthole. Wife said he was. Story 44. 
couldn't decide on which chicken to buy for their chicken farm. Story 45. My uncle and his wife, reasoning she lost a frying pan. Story 46. Vaccinate their child. Dad says go, mom says no. Story 47. Couldn't decide to buy a dog or a cat. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.